Queen welcomes Meghan to the royal family as she places engagement portrait of the actress and Prince Harry on table alongside her as she delivers her speech. The Queen went out of her way to welcome Meghan Markle to the royal family in her Christmas message as she said she looked forward to welcoming new members into the family in the new year. A framed photograph of the bride-to-be with her beau Prince Harry was displayed with other family pictures as the monarch spoke, and the couple also featured in video footage aired at the end of the festive broadcast. She will also have been talking about the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's new child which is due to be born in April 2018. The Queen did not, however, Mention the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge by name. A framed photograph of the bride to be with her beau Prince Harry was displayed with other family pictures as the monarch spoke. The Queen will pay tribute to the royal family during her 60th Christmas speech as she poses next to photos of her and Prince Philip. Her great-grandchildren Charlotte and George, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and Prince Charles and Camilla. The monarch gave the speech in the 1844 room alongside portraits of her and Prince Philip and her great-grandchildren, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Also visible on another table were the official engagement portrait of Prince Harry and his fiancée Meghan Markle as well as Prince Charles and his wife Camilla the Duchess of Cornwall taken earlier this year by Mario Testino. The Queen and her husband featured in a black and white image from their 1947 wedding and in a color photo released to mark their 70th wedding anniversary celebrated in November. Taken by photographer Chris Jackson, the portrait of Prince George was issued by Kensington Palace on July 22 to mark the youngster's fourth birthday. The photo of Charlotte was taken by her mother, the Duchess of Cambridge to mark her second birthday on May 2. Pictured left to right, the Queen and Prince Philip on their wedding day in 1947, the royal couple on their 70th wedding anniversary this year, Princess Charlotte's official second birthday portrait, Prince George's official fourth birthday portrait The Queen and Prince Philip feature in a black and white image from their 1947 wedding photographs of the Queen's great-grandchildren, Prince George, left, and Princess Charlotte, right, will also be on display The portrait of Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall was taken earlier this year as a 70th birthday present from Camilla to Charles. Prince Harry and Ems Markle were photographed outside Kensington Palace to mark their engagement announcement in late November. Ems Markle, 36, who is spending Christmas at Sandringham with Harry and other senior royals, is likely to have watched the Queen's message with members of the monarchy. Her appearance in the Queen's end-of-year address to the nation is another sign of how quickly she has been accepted into Britain's most prominent family. Earlier today, Meghan stunned the crowds as she attended a Christmas church service with the royal family. The photograph of the prince and his fiancée, and their video footage, were from the day of their engagement announcement in November the actress stepped out in an eye-catching brown beret and wrapped up warm against the chilly winter temperatures in a beige 986 pounds sun tailor coat which she tied up at the front. Meghan clutched on to her royal beau Prince Harry, 33 and proudly displayed the engagement ring that he himself designed before their engagement in November. 
as well as her beret and beige combination, Meghan wore a pair of Stuart Weitzman over-the-knee boots and carried a $1,550 leather handbag by Chloe. She is also wearing a pair of Burke Snowflake earrings, which she donned at the Queen's Christmas lunch. This year, it is understood that Prince Harry and his fiance will stay with Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge Kate at Enmer Hall, their home in the Sandringham grounds, rather than in the main house. Markle will have to adjust to the royal family's idiosyncratic ways and customs, ingrained in centuries of tradition. Earlier today, Meghan stunned the crowds as she attended a Christmas church service in Sandringham with the royal family The Queen's speech in full 60 years ago today, a young woman spoke about the speed of technological change as she presented the first television broadcast of its kind. She described the moment as a landmark. Six decades on, the presenter has evolved somewhat, as has the technology she described. Back then, who could have imagined that people would one day be watching this on laptops and mobile phones as some of you are today? But I'm also struck by something that hasn't changed. That, whatever the technology, many of you will be watching this at home. We think of our homes as places of warmth, familiarity and love, of shared stories and memories, which is perhaps why at this time of year so many return to where they grew up. There is a timeless simplicity to the pull of home. For many, the idea of home reaches beyond a physical building to a hometown or city. This Christmas, I think of London and Manchester, whose powerful identities shone through over the past 12 months in the face of appalling attacks. In Manchester, those targeted included children who had gone to see their favourite singer. A few days after the bombing, I had the privilege of meeting some of the young survivors and their parents. I described that hospital visit as a privilege because the patients I met were an example to us all, showing extraordinary bravery and resilience. Indeed, many of those who survived the attack came together just days later for a benefit concert. It was a powerful reclaiming of the ground, and of the city those young people call home. We expect our homes to be a place of safety sanctuary even which makes it all the more shocking when the comfort they provide is shattered. A few weeks ago, the Prince of Wales visited the Caribbean in the aftermath of hurricanes that destroyed entire communities. And here in London, who can forget the sheer awfulness of the Grenfell Tower fire? Our thoughts and prayers are with all those who died and those who lost so much, and we are indebted to members of the emergency services who risked their own lives, this past year, saving others. Many of them, of course, will not be at home today because they are working, to protect us. Reflecting on these events makes me grateful for the blessings of home and family, and in particular for 70 years of marriage. I don't know that anyone had invented the term platinum for a 70th wedding anniversary when I was born. You weren't expected to be around that long. Even Prince Philip has decided it's time to slow down a little having, as he economically put it, done his bit. 
but I know his support and unique sense of humor will remain as strong as ever, as we enjoy spending time this Christmas with our family and look forward to welcoming new members into it next year. In 2018 I will open my home to a different type of family, the leaders of the 52 nations of the Commonwealth, as they gather in the UK for a summit. The Commonwealth has an inspiring way of bringing people together, be it through the Commonwealth Games which begin in a few months time on Australia's Gold Coast or through bodies like the Commonwealth Youth Orchestra and Choir, a reminder of how truly vibrant this international family is. Today we celebrate Christmas, which itself is sometimes described as a festival of the home. Families travel long distances to be together. Volunteers and charities, as well as many churches, arrange meals for the homeless and those who would otherwise be alone on Christmas Day. We remember the birth of Jesus Christ whose only sanctuary was a stable in Bethlehem. He knew rejection, hardship and persecution. And yet it is Jesus Christ's generous love and example which has inspired me through good times and bad. Whatever your own experiences this year, wherever and however you are watching, I wish you a peaceful and very happy Christmas. <laughs>